Watching the number one eyewitness news at 6.30. The new specialists. Once the debate over MFN is over, no matter how it is decided, once that debate is over, torture in China will continue. The U.S. section of Am Amnesty International said today that Chinese authorities are using things like thumb screws and electric prods in widespread torture of dissidents. Next month, the president will have a, to decide if he will renew most favored nation trade status for China. A man who has firsthand knowledge of human rights abuses in China spoke today at Weber State University. Before the speech, Harry Wu talked about his personal experiences with news specialist Dwayne Cardall. Harry Wu, son of a wealthy Shanghai banker. In 1960, the 23-year-old student was arrested by Chinese authorities and without formal charges or a trial, spent the next 19 years of his life in prison labor camps. His crime? When I was 20 years old, students, I spoke out. I criticized the Soviet invasion in Hungary in 1956. Now, Wu is on a crusade giving speeches like this one in Ogden. He left China in 1985, hoping to escape the nightmares of his past. I committed suicide. I was tortured. They broke my arm. They broke my back. I was uh, almost dead in the coma accident. The police uh, seems uh, I suppose I'm dead. They prepared a coffee. My mother was coming suicide when she heard she heard I was arrested. My brother was tortured to death. My father was tortured. I want to, you know block away from that. I want to really come to a peaceful land, freedom country, starting my new life. I'm trying to forget. But unfortunately, the nightmare never, never let me go. Wu's nightmare compelled him to return to China in 1991. In the face of extreme danger, he and his wife used a hidden camera to document conditions in China's prisons. Just like Hitler needed a concentration camp system, Stalin need a gulag system. Chinese need a laogai system. Laogai means forced labor. 60 Minutes used his remarkable video to show how products produced by forced labor are sometimes imported by U.S. firms in violation of U.S. law. They still continue to export the products to the United States or all of the world. Wu just returned from another clandestine five-week trip to China, supported by a network of workers trying to expose China's gulag. At least 50, mil 50 million people have been thrown in the camps, and many of them disappeared. And many people today still in the camp experience my experience. Even today? Even today. The same thing is happening. This is the graveyard. He returned three days ago with scores of pictures. The sign outside this building identifies it as a factory. Inside, though, he says if you know where to look, there's a sign identifying it as a prison. This is the truck loaded of the products, ready for export, and the truck say number two prison, the Jiang province number two prison. And you see all the workers, prisoners, Wu says he traced the products, hand tools, to a company in Houston, Texas. In a few weeks, President Clinton must decide whether China has made enough progress on human rights in the past year to warrant renewal of most favored nation trade status. He should say, yes, the condition didn't match. MFN should be stopped, if he is honest, President. In recent weeks, China has released several high-profile political prisoners. Wu says that always happens just before important international decisions involving China. But he contends new prisoners will take their place. Wu says the Chinese gulag is as vast and insidious as ever. Duane Cardall, KSL News, Ogden. Harry Wu works as a resident scholar at Stanford University's Hoover Institute. Up next, the story of a man who was trying to honor his dead hero. And uh, he got thrown.